Hi guys, welcome back to The Art of Server. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about this server right here. This is the Dell R610. And this particular one has a problem. The fans are running unusually high, and I don't know if you can hear it through the mic, but it's actually very, very loud. So if you have an R610 server, and yours is running loud, you're gonna to wanna to stick to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how to potentially fix this problem. All right, so, just to kind of give you a sense of uh, the loudness here. So let me turn this on. I'm just gonna stick it to the front of the server. So it's reading about 74 decibels. And the problem here is that this server thinks that the ambient temperature is really really high so let me kind of show you that here we can go to view temperature and you'll see that it thinks that the room temperature here is 40 degrees celsius hopefully you guys can see that 40 degrees celsius and i can guarantee you it's not that hot in here 40 degrees celsius is pretty darn hot so here I have an infrared uh, meter and you can see hopefully, let's see, get the glare out of there, that it's reading the room temperature about 23. All right, so the problem here is that the ambient temperature sensor in the server is failing and it's reading extra high, so the rest of the server thinks, oh, this server must be running in a really hot room, and so we have to spin up the fans in order to compensate. So the CPUs and all that stuff, they're not running hot, nothing is running hot inside this. In fact, they're probably running a little bit cooler because the fans are running so high. But all right, let me also show you from uh, here. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So I'm basically running IPMI sensor and I'm uh, grepping for fan and ambient temperature. So you can see the fan speeds. Uh, by the way, this is a dual um, fan module, so you'll have to look at mod 1B and mod 1A are actually the same fan module. There's a, there's a front and rear fan in the module that are counter-rotating, I believe. So you'll see it's running at 8,000 RPM, and the rear one's running almost uh, 6,000, 5,700 to almost 6,000. RPM, so they're running incredibly high even though the system is not under load and There's no particular heat source or like unusual heat source in the system And as you can see it, it reads the ambient temperature at 40 degrees Which is incorrect as you saw from the infrared meter earlier. All right So I'm going to show you how to go about fixing this ambient temperature sensor problem All right, so let me go ahead and just shut down All right, so we're gonna fix the ambient temperature sensor in the server, and you're gonna see that all the problems with the fan noise and the high fan speeds are gonna go away. All right guys, so I got the lid removed, and the ambient sensor, uh, the temperature sensor in the server is actually located on this logic board right here that's part of the front panel IO and the internal USB and SD card controller board. This board somewhere on it is the ambient temperature sensor and this is basically the board that you're going to want to replace if you have this problem where the you're, you have an unusually high ambient temperature sensor reading. Once you fix that and the server gets the correct temperature then those problems with the high fan speeds are gonna go away. Okay, so in order to remove that board, the first thing we wanna do is, well, unplug any USB things that you might have in it, and you're gonna need a Torx 8 and Torx 10 screwdriver. So there is one screw right here, and I recommend you remove this one first. Hopefully you guys can see that. So there's a Torx 8 screw right there, and there are 
a few other screws up here. These are Torx 10 screws over here. And this one, the first time I did this, I removed this too, just because it looked like it needed to be removed. But actually, you don't need to remove that. So I'm going to give you guys that tip and save you one step. Uh, don't remove this screw. That just holds onto a plastic bracket that uh, is attached to that screw in the front. What you're going to need to remove are uh, the screws here, here, and there. Okay, just the three here and the one in the front. All right, so I'm going to set the camera up on the tripod and uh, let's go ahead and remove this board. All right, guys, so like I said earlier, we're going to remove this uh, Torx 8 screw first. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is just a coarse thread uh, screw that goes into a piece of plastic there. So we'll put that aside. All right, so now let's go ahead and remove the screws from the top. All right, guys, so before we get started removing this board here, uh, we got to disconnect all the cables. And so the first cable here is the kind of I.O. cable that goes to the front power switch and all that stuff. So this just backs off. You just kind of push it back and it comes right out. Okay. Now, if you need a little bit more clearance, you can take out this uh, RAID controller battery if you have a RAID controller. So this just comes right out like that. All it is is this one little metal clip kind of holding it in. All right, and this is the front uh, USB port cable, so we're going to remove that. There's a lever or a latch on top, so just press down on that and it comes right out. Now, if you have an SD card reader module right here, which this one does not, there might be a cable plugged into this port right here that says SD. You'll want to disconnect that as well, but I don't have that right now. And also, that's this is the... Um, internal USB-A port, and if you have something there, you'd want to unplug that as well. Now, finally, there's one more cable, and that's this little ribbon cable that goes to the front panel LCD. And in order to move, remove that, this is kind of one of those like compression-fitted cables. Uh, you're gonna, there's a, there's a little pra, uh, plastic thing on top. I don't know how to describe it, but basically you want to lift this, and it's gonna release this cable, and then you can pull the cable out, okay? so. I'm just gonna grab it from the sides and kind of wiggle it. I don't know if you heard that click, but basically this popped up. And from that point on, you can basically lift this cable out. Well, let's see. It's still a little bit stuck. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so that cable comes right out like that. So now that we have all the cables disconnected, we can remove the screws and uh, take the board out. All right, so the screws are Torx 10 screws, if I hadn't mentioned that before, so you're gonna need a Torx 10 uh, screwdriver. So go ahead and remove the one, two, three screws right here. Uh, the last one here, you guys probably can't see in the camera because this bracket's kind of getting in the way. But there is one other screw over here that uh, you can ignore because that's just connected to a plastic bracket. All right, so there's one Torx 10 screw. Two of them. And the third one is back here behind the USB port. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's basically right here. And so let me go ahead and remove that. Oops. All right, so right there. Okay, so um, by the way, if you have a magnetizer, it'd be a good idea to magnetize your screwdriver because uh, uh, it's easy to drop the screws into these tiny crevices here and it'll be really hard to get out. All right, so I think that's the only thing that's holding that board right in. So we should be able to just kind of wiggle this out right now with all the cables detached. So, all right, so this is the uh, the panel that has the temperature sensor somewhere on this board. I'm not really sure where it is, but I have another one. So let's go ahead and install that. All right, so here is the replacement board. And hopefully this one has a good sensor. I believe it does. And uh, let's go ahead and install this. So it's pretty easy, just reverse of, oh, by the way, let me just kind of show you. So you know that big screw that I was telling you about that you should ignore? Yeah, right there. OK, 
Okay, because on the back, all it is doing is attached to this plastic bracket that has the screw hole for that screw in the front. So you really don't need to remove that screw. So don't bother with that. All right, I'm gonna give you guys that tip. All right, so let's go ahead and put this board back in here and align it with the holes in the front for the USB and VGA. All right, so yep, that's it. So let me go ahead and put, oops. Okay, I just dropped the screw in here. Like I said, magnetize your screwdrivers if you can. Really helps. Okay, found it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw on first. Okay. All right, so the screws are in and we just got to reconnect the cables. So the controller panel cable goes right in, just press that in. Make sure it's seated all the way so that all of those connections make a good contact. And then we'll plug in the USB. Now, of course, if you have the SD card module or USB-A device plugged in here, you're gonna wanna plug those back in as well. Um, finally, let's do the front panel LCD cable. So you just have to slide this ribbon cable. Make sure this thing is uh, pulled up. Put that cable, the ribbon cable, uh, as far down as you can, okay? It'll kind of uh, hit a stopping point at some point when, as you press down on it. And then just press down on that bracket and that should secure that cable. All right, and then I have the uh, RAID battery here, so let's put that back in. And finally, we gotta put that one uh, Torx 8 screw uh, on the front. All right, so that's the hole for the Torx 8 screw. This one's a little harder to get into because it's a coarse thread. It just goes into that black plastic bracket that's being held on. All right, there we go. Got it in. All right. All right, so that's it for getting the front IO panel controller uh, board replaced that has that ambient temperature sensor. So let me plug my USB boot drive back in. So let's power this guy back on and see what the ambient temperature reads. And we should also notice, if, if it's reading correctly, we should notice that the fans are gonna run a lot slower and quieter. All right guys, so the system is booted up. I don't know if you can hear it through the mic here, but it is definitely a lot quieter. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the IPMI tool sensor command that I ran earlier. Let's see what we get. All right, so you can see that the fan speeds are now under 5,000 RPM for the front fan. And the rear fan is about 3,300, under 3,400 RPM. And the ambient temperature sensor is now reading 27 degrees Celsius instead of the 40 that it was reading earlier. All right, so just to confirm, here is my uh, infrared sensor, uh, temperature sensor. It's reading the room at about 24, 23 to 24 as uh, before. But if we read the uh, sensor from the iDRAC, let's go to view. Go over to temperature is now reading 27, which is close enough. Uh, it's probably a little bit warmer on the inside. So uh, that's definitely 
not 40 degrees like it was reading earlier. All right, and let's get a reading on the uh, fan noise. Okay, so earlier, remember, it was reading, when I put it like straight up in front of the machine, it was reading about 74. So right now, basically, it's reading about 60. And so that's about 14 decibels lower. And all I did was basically replace that sensor. So if you have an R610 that seems to be running unusually uh, fast, span, uh, fast fans, and you notice that the ambient temperature sensor is reading higher than it, it really should, this is how you can fix that problem. It's a really, really easy fix. To that problem and that logic board that front panel logic board is is a very um, affordable um, part that you can find on ebay or elsewhere also i'll leave a link in the video description of this video so uh with the uh dell part number to that board so that you can search for it on ebay and if you use my affiliate links it's going to help this channel out so I'd really appreciate that if you happen to have this problem. All right guys, so that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give me that thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Also, if you wanna support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I have the best selection of pre-flashed IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your true NAS, ZFS, or Unray builds. So go check out the link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.